Buongiorno, our friends. Welcome to Venice, Italy. Well, actually, we're not in Venice yet. We're actually staying in the city of Marghera, which is a little bit outside of Venice. We're on our way to a bus stop. So from the bus, we're gonna take that into kind of the main station in Venice. And then from there, actually go and explore some of the top sites and share those with you today. So you can see kind of what to expect in Venice, if it's worth visiting, maybe sample some Venetian food and some wine along the way, and try to just get the most out of Venice out of this day. Let's get to it. And another quick tip while we're waiting is that there's a couple options you can do in terms of logistics or transportation into Venice. So first, you could just get a bus ticket that's 7.5 euros, and that just kind of gets you into Venice. But once you're there, you need to pay additionally for some of those different kind of like boat, taxis, or ferries. So what our Airbnb host recommended and what we did is we actually bought a day pass for 20 euros, which covers bus and then all of the boat um, tickets basically for a 24 hour period. And he said ultimately that'll likely save you money. Yeah. So just another kind of little tip that we wanted to share before we get on the Parmesan bus. a short walk we made it here to our first destination which is the Scousy Bridge a really kind of cool iconic and beautiful bridge but something really interesting that a lot of people don't know is the stone that actually goes into making this bridge this very kind of iconic white actually comes from the Croatian province of Istria which is literally where we were yesterday driving in here to Venice and we actually stopped at a port in Pula Croatia where they were exporting this exact same type of stone so really cool really beautiful and first of many beautiful stops, hopefully. And just a seven minute walk away, I am now here outside of the Scuola Grande di San Rocco. I was not allowed to go inside with my camera, so Ali's inside, and basically this was a structure that was built to house a collection of some really impressive and beautiful art. Let's go see the inside. here at Ponte dell'Accademia. This is the only wooden bridge that actually goes across the Great Canal. But why people come here isn't specifically for the bridge itself. It's more for the view that you get over here of the Basilica and this very famous point here in Venice. And actually, as a special treat, there is an Italian woman right here who wants to share some insider tips with you about Venice. What is your name? Desiree. Desiree, what were you kind of telling us before? Okay, well, I was telling you that at the end of the, uh, um, the church, you can see like a tower, and uh, uh, that tower is placed on a piece of land that looks like uh, really a sharp angle, and it's called Punta de la Dugana, and that's where they checked out all the goods coming in to Venice, and uh, uh, before coming in into the city, uh, everybody, tourists and uh, merchants, had to stay at one of the islands outside of Venice for 40 days. In Italian it's 40 giorni, 40 quarantena, quarantine. So that's the name for what we're doing with the COVID and everything, but they did it already at 1,300, yeah, thousand years ago. Wow. Exactly. You're very, very... <laughs> in the middle of where it all started. So since uh, I got the question, where can we eat? You have to know that you have to eat pastries in the cafe and in the bars you can eat salt, salty things. 
If you go towards Ca Foscari, Ca Foscari is the University of Venice, you can find a lot of small bars where can, you can eat tramezzini, which is kind of like a sandwich. So if you want to go for salty things, you eat tramezzini, which is typical for Venice. And they're stuffed with a lot of different things from meat to vegetables to fish from where we are now at um, l'Accademia. If you go towards the railway station then you pass by the University of uh, Ca Foscari and you find a lot of places like uh, Tonolo which is uh, uh, a place where all the Venetians go to have uh, coffee and cappuccino and uh, brioche which is the croissant uh, Italian croissant and all other pastries typical for, from Venice. And uh, if you want to eat a real meal, meal, I suggest you go to uh, Canareggio, which is on the other side from where we are now, of, of the canal. If you look for places like Da Marco, Da Carla, etc., that's a good indication of a osteria or taverna where you can eat real Venetian food. So it's not Ciao Italia or things like that. It's mm, Hamburg, okay? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs>
taking the advice of our Airbnb host, as well as our friend from earlier, we are here in the Canarillo region, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which apparently has more Italian tourists versus a lot more kind of international tourists. So we decided to walk and we're here at Ormazzini and we ordered a few different dishes. So first, starting with a tuna tartare, next with a cuttlefish spaghetti, so kind of this black spaghetti. Um, afterwards, we have some sea bass and to drink, of course, have some local red wine and Ali has an Aperol Spritz, which is actually related to Venice. So the story goes that during the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Austrian soldiers were not used to drinking wine. So to kind of you know reduce the amount of alcohol and strength of the wine, they would actually spritzen the wine, or they would take sparkling water and add it to wine to water it down. So this was done for a while, and then in the 1950s, Instead of you know watering down wine with kind of some sparkling water, they would use um, Aperol or some other different kind of liquors and thus came about Aperol Spritz. Just so much history and so much beauty here. And while this is the end of our day, it is not the end of our adventure. We have something special for you in three, two, one. And we're back and we're here at Libreria Aqua Alta. Libreria Aqua Alta. Um, which is this really cool bookstore here in Venice and of course yesterday we were not able to go to like even half of what we wanted to uh, even if we had a full week I don't think we'd be able to go to all these places because Venice is so dense and rich but this is one of the places that we really wanted to go to yesterday and we actually had just a little bit more time in Venice so we we're able to squeeze this in and we're really excited to check it out come with us the adventure through Venice over these past kind of day and a half and definitely even if you have one day um, it's gonna be a full day but it's definitely worth it but if possible at least two days because it is such a dense rich and amazing city and to be completely honest Ali and I were talking even before because we we're just here in Venice for like kind of these couple of days as a layover between Croatia and Portugal and we thought that Venice was going to be way overhyped. We thought people were going to be rude. It was going to be, you know, dirty and, and rainy and all this kind of stuff. And we didn't share it because we don't want to be offensive. But man, that was definitely not the case. People here are wonderful. Obviously, it's it's extremely rich, beautiful city. Um, and food's amazing. And something else is really surprising is how inexpensive your stay yes. in Venice can be. Staying in places like uh, Marghera and kind of driving in with transportation, rent, just getting like street food. It can actually be fairly inexpensive for what you get. So really kind of a surprising city, an amazing city. Oh my gosh, definitely, definitely worth visiting. And if you wanna stay tuned for future adventures, not just here in Europe, but all over the world, then be sure to subscribe. And if you like the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment with any questions or anything you'd like to share with other travelers. And as always, thanks so much for your support. God bless, and look forward to seeing you in the next adventure. Ciao. Ciao.